We had two massive coaching hires uh, this weekend between Chip Kelly and Dan Mullen to Florida. So that is going to bring us into our college coaching jobs roundup. So a little bit of a drum roll, please. Let's get into UCLA hiring Chip Kelly. And ladies and gentlemen, I think there is only one grade. And here, Elena, we'll, we'll, we'll bring it back on screen. There's only one grade that you can give Chip Kelly signing to Florida, signing to UCLA. A fat A. A big old A. Best possible hire that UCLA could have possibly made. Perfect, perfect, perfect fit. He will bring stability to that program. He will bring a legitimate offense to that program. He will bring recruiting knowledge in the Pac-12, success in bowl games, uh, success on a national stage. He will bring everything that UCLA has been looking for out of their program. Because if there's one thing that UCLA has not been able to do forever, it is win big football games. Never have they been able to win big football games. And finally, they bring in a head coach who has won big football games inside of their conference. And I think it's also important that UCLA for years, had, actually pretty much their entire existence as a football team, has been trying to get out of the shadow of USC. And if you're going to do that, you need a name coach. And I'm sorry, Jim Mora was not that name. So think about it now. If, you're, if you live in Los Angeles as a high school football player and you have an option between going to USC and playing for Clay Helton and playing for UCLA under Chip Kelly, uh, I mean, <laughs> I, I, at that point, that is a really difficult, really difficult decision to make if you are a kid because you have the, the allure of USC, the Coliseum, you have the just the concept of what USC is as a football program, but I'm sorry, Clay Helton is not the coach that Chip Kelly is. Chip Kelly is the name, he has the offense, the elitism, everything that you've ever needed, the success, the, the national championship appearances. He has everything that you want out of a college coaching hire. And I also gotta say, and this is something that we, we talked about in the chat sports office a lot, they got him for a steal. Four million dollars a year for Chip Kelly to UCLA? Are you serious? You're telling me that Florida wasn't throwing eight mil at this guy? Well, Urban Meyer got almost that. Jim Harbaugh got nine mil. And Chip Kelly gets four from UCLA. That's a steal. That is an absolute steal. Perfect, perfect hire. A fat A. Get your weigh-ins in. I want to hear some comments. Was Chip Kelly a good hire for UCLA? I say yes. I say you could not have picked out a better uh, coaching hire for UCLA. All right, let's jump over to our next guy, Florida, hiring Dan Mullen, stealing the Mississippi State head coach from the Bulldogs. And I gotta say, this is a this is a interesting grade to give out because Dan Mullen's a, a, a quality head coach. I think he was constantly held back by the I, I wanna say lack of potential recruiting power at Mississippi State. That's not to say that Mississippi State is a bad school. It's not. Quality school, quality football program. But if you're looking at it within the scale of, S of the SEC, might not be the number one school in its own state. Definitely isn't the number one, two, or three school in its own division inside of its own conference. Probably, it definitely isn't a top five school in its own conference. Definitely might not even be a top seven school in its own conference. Now Dan Mullen jumps to Florida and brings a prowess of understanding the quarterback position that they have not had in a long time. Florida's always had a ton of talent on defense and they've always had good skill position players. But that quarterback position has been an absolute mystery for that team. Dan Mullen has shown a distinct ability in his career to understand quarterbacks. You just look through his college career and the guys that he has brought through into the NFL. Just to name off a couple, uh, Alex Smith, Josh Harris from Bowling Green, Chris Leak at Florida, Tim Tebow at Florida, and now Dak Prescott at Mississippi State. Florida will be very happy to bring in a guy who understands the quarterback position like Dan Mullen does. I think this is a good hire. I'm going to give Dan Mullen a B. I think that Dan Mullen is a good hire for Florida. 
it's a stable hire, it's a safe hire as well. There's only so many things that can go wrong when you hire Dan Mullen. He brings in an understanding of the SEC as well. I think he's the safest hire they could have bring. But just a reminder, he was their third option. Dan Mullen was not Chip Kelly. Dan Mullen was not Scott Frost. Dan Mullen was their third option at Florida. So what does that tell you about the program? I think that throws a lot of question marks at this program as a whole that they were not able to bring in a guy like Chip Kelly or a guy like Scott Frost that they had to go with Dan Mullen. Maybe Dan Mullen was always number one. We'll never know. But I think we can all kind of, you know, inquire or, or I guess assume that Dan Mullen was behind Chip Kelly and Scott Frost. So let's move away from those two and let's get into the rest of our coaching boards. We're going to start with Tennessee, looking at a couple coaching names that they could be looking at. Number five, we have Chad Morris. Chad Morris is the current head coach at SMU. Done a really good job with that program, pulling it out of a you know, pretty, dark, pretty dark times. They used to have June Jones before him, but Chad Morris has actually turned them into a pretty good overall program. And also, he actually... With, uh, with, with that SMU program, they currently have the number one wide receiver in the country going into the draft in Cortland Sutton. So I think that he would bring a nice offense to them. And also, one fun fact about Chad Morris, I understand you know, he's doing good at SMU. He was the offensive coordinator at Clemson for a while. He also is one of the best high school football coaches ever. 169 and 38 record as a high school head coach, including two back-to-back -back state titles in Texas before he left for SMU. So pretty impressive stuff as a high school head coach for Chad Morris. I think he'd be a stable head coaching option for them. We move to number four. We have Willie Taggart, the current head coach for Oregon. Uh, I think his record this year is a little bit swayed. Uh, they lost their starting quarterback, Justin Herbert, who but if you don't know Justin Herbert yet, you need to go learn who Justin Herbert is. That guy is special. That kid can play. But he was great at USF. He really took that program up to the, I guess, I don't want to say the upper echelon of programs, but he made them a favorite in the American Conference every single year. And you can see what they're doing this year, uh, now under Charlie Strong, doing a lot of great stuff. He also basically launched the Western Kentucky before Jeff Brom took them over. Uh, a couple years ago with uh, Brandon Dowdy, but that Western Kentucky program before and after Willie Taggart got there was a pretty uh, was a pretty big switch. But I don't think Willie Taggart's going to leave Oregon anytime soon. But I think he would be a great slot for them. And number three, we have Mike Norvell, the Memphis head coach. I, I mean, hey, if you can bring Memphis to what he's been able to do with them, it's pretty spectacular. He's turned Riley Ferguson into an NFL quarterback option, which is pretty spectacular. They're 10-1 and one this year. They're going to be in the uh, American Athletic Conference Championship game against uh, UCF uh, this weekend. Incredible game. Another you know, two, two, a matchup of another top 25 matchup. That's going to be super fun. He will bring a great offense to their, to their system. He understands you know, what Tennessee is, obviously coming from Memphis. It would be a, you know, a kind of, not of a local kid coming home, but it would be a nice upgrade for Mike Norvell. Let's move into Scott Frost. Speaking of who Memphis is going to be taking on, they will be taking on UCF. Tennessee, th this is an interesting one because I think at this point with Scott Frost, I think it's kind of Nebraska or he goes back to UCF. I actually think he should stay at UCF. I understand that there are not going to be a lot of times where a job like Nebraska opens up for Scott Frost, who, you know, played quarterback at Nebraska. But, hey, I'll put it this way. He's 11-0 this year at UCF. If he comes back next year with the same team, and they, after they win a bowl game with the same offense, Mackenzie Martin staying their starting quarterback, they might be able to make a run at a top-four spot. I'm not saying it's going to happen. But a run could be there coming off of a 12-0 year if they're able to win their conference and then a New Year's Six Bowl. We'll see. And then our next guy, we have Matt Campbell, who I think would be a good, not great hire. I understand the allure of Matt Campbell. Young guy, big wins this year over Oklahoma and TCU. But if you look at his overall success at Iowa State, not great. I understand that it's Iowa State. They're in, you know, they're in the Big 12. It's tough to actually get some wins in that conference as a lower-tier team. But... 10 and 14 overall, Iowa State. He's only been there for two years. He was great at Toledo, back to back nine win seasons. But at the same time, would Matt Campbell be the guy that could kind of pull Tennessee out of, out of the proverbial darkness? I'm not totally convinced. We'll see what happens with, with that coaching hire. We have a little reaction poll coming up here for you guys. Who should Tennessee hire? A wild face for Matt Campbell, a heart for Mike Norvell, a wild face for Willie Taggart. 
and then a angry face for Chad Morris. I personally think that Mike Norvell would be a fantastic option for them. Brings a stable offense in, brings a good head coach, and also brings, yeah, hey, Memphis, you move them up from Memphis, from the uh, University of Memphis to the University of Tennessee. I think it's a, a pretty fitting uh, upgrade for him. All right, we're going to quickly move through Texas A&M here because I think there's really only one guy right now that's being rumored to Texas A&M, and we'll talk about him. So at number five, we have Jeff Brom, uh, the Purdue head coach. Uh, he's actually get, got Purdue into a bowl game. I don't see them actually uh, – I don't see Jeff Brom leaving, but Purdue could be an option. At number four, I'm going to move on here. We have Mike Norvell again. Uh, I think it would be an interesting option. Brings a nice offense to the SEC – but I think Mike Norvell has Tennessee on the mind. I think that's the guy they should go with. And number three, we have Justin Fuente, the Virginia Tech head coach, who I personally think would be a, a, a great hire. I don't think he's going to leave Virginia Tech, though. I think that he's trying to build something big with that conference. I think that Justin Fuente, for the most part, is going to stay at Virginia Tech. He has his young quarterback. He has a good defense. The ACC is there. I think it's still ripe for the taking. I think Fuente is going to stay there. And number two, we have Chris Peterson, the University of Washington head coach. Been fantastic for both Boise State and now Washington. Been one of the best coaches in the Pac-12. He's going to stay there. They just keep giving him money, but definitely an option for them. And then the number one guy, I can't even believe we're talking about this. Jimbo Fisher might leave FSU to go to Texas A&M. This is a real thing, people. We've been getting tweets all over the place about how Texas A&M might be able to steal Jimbo Fisher from FSU. I don't understand it. I think it'd be one of the worst moves that Jimbo Fisher could make, moving from a top 10 program to uh, moving to Texas A&M, an eight win a year program. I'm sorry, a eight win a year program in Texas A&M just fired an eight win a year head coach. I don't think Jimbo Fisher is going. We have even have a reaction poll. Will Jimbo Fisher really leave FSU? Wild face for yes, angry face for no a laughing face or only for Texas A&M, and even another laughing face for you crazy dog because I, I think I'm crazy. I, there's no way that Jimbo, Fitch, if Jimbo Fitcher leaves FSU. I'm, I'm going to go crazy. I think that'd be ridiculous. All right, let's move away from Texas A&M and into Nebraska, and we have the Navy head coach. He's been great, 83-47 and 47 as the head coach. The Navy's made a bowl game every single year, won 11-2 in 2015 with Keenan Reynolds. He was pretty fantastic. Uh, been a pretty fantastic option for them so far. I think he's going to stay at Navy. I think Nebraska would be a little bit too big of an upgrade for him. Let him stay at Navy. Let us have fun Army-Navy games every single year. Let's move away now to Dave Doern, the NC State head coach. Remember, this was the guy that took Northern Illinois out of the darkness with Jordan Lynch a couple years ago. Been in NC State since 2013. Done pretty great things with that program. They were ranked this year. Going to have one of the top draft picks this year, Bradley Chubb, come out. I think Dave Doan is a, a, would be a, a good option for them. Again, a stable option. Maybe a little under what would be fitting for a Nebraska head coach, but a good option nonetheless. Number three, we have Matt Campbell, the Iowa State head coach. We mentioned him before. Nebraska might actually be a, a better option for him. Uh, let's him kind of stay a little bit more in his comfort zone. Let's him bring in an offense. I think he'd be, that'd be a, a good pick for them. I, I think Matt Campbell to Nebraska would actually be a pretty stable fit. And number two, this is actually a pretty interesting name. Uh, that we're going to bring up here. Uh, Kyle Whittingham, the Utah head coach. who is, He's been at Utah since 1994. He's been the head coach in 2004. He has been amazing for them. 110-55 record has basically kept them in relevancy for, for most of the time. He's been there 13-0 in 2008, obviously way back when they uh, still had Alex Smith. He, he's done pretty astounding things with that program. But I think there's only one option for Nebraska at this point, isn't there? It, it's Scott Frost. Scott Frost is their guy, played quarterback there. This is the guy they're going for. I think Scott Frost is the guy. He's the man. He's who they want. Young head coach, up and coming. He'll bring stability, a great offense, and a lot of, good, and a lot of smarts to that position that I think that college football is looking for. We need a new young head coach in the sphere. I think Scott Frost is the guy. So those are our Nebraska guys. Let's jump over to the Arkansas Razorbacks options and we have Matt Campbell again at number five. Obviously, they just fired Brett Bielma. We've talked enough about Matt Campbell. We don't need to talk about Matt Campbell. Let's actually go to a, a, our number four option here. Skip Holtz, the coach for Louisiana Tech, has actually done some pretty good things with that program. You might, you know, you might think, you know, is Skip Holtz going to be a big enough Colts, 
a uh, big enough coach, excuse me, to move over to Arkansas. I think it would actually be a pretty good option of them. He's done really well as a head coach, 125 and 99 as a record. He's gone five and three in bowls. I think that he'd be a pretty good option for them. He was uh, also at UCF and also at Eastern Carolina. So he has a good coaching repertoire. We'll see what happens with Skip Holtz, though. I, I think he'd be a decent option. Might not be a big enough name for Arkansas. The big name, though, that's been connected to Arkansas so far has been Mike Leach, the head coach of Washington State. I think Mike Leach would be crazy for leaving. You're crazy for this one. I, I think that Mike Leach is going to end up staying. I think he's done incredible things with that Washington State program. Why leave? It's only going to get better now. You know, Chip Kelly's there. They're bringing a lot of great out, great coaches into the Pac-12. A lot of great talent there right now. I think Mike Leach would be good to stay. But hey, Arkansas is a good job. And number two, we bring on Chad Morris again, the SMU head coach, who again, good option, stable option, not the big name option. Familiar with the, um, excuse me, familiar uh, I guess with Arkansas, but at the same time, might not be the big name. I think this is their guy though. I think Mike Norvell is the guy that's going to end up with. I mentioned him as the number one option for Tennessee. I don't think Tennessee is going to get him. Remember, Mike Norvell has a lot of connections to Arkansas. He went to the University of Central Arkansas. That's where he went to school. He is from Arkansas. It's, it's, it's a perfect fit. It's a perfect fit. Brings an offense to the SEC. Brings a stable option as well. I think that he would be a great, great pick for them. It's a homecoming. What direction should Arkansas go? Wow face for Mike Norvell, a hard for Mike Leach, a laughing face for Matt Campbell, and an angry face for Chad Morris. It's, it's Mike Norvell, ladies and gentlemen. I think Mike Norvell is, is definitely their guy. Let's jump over now to Arizona State. And one of the interesting things about this Arizona State job, uh, we'll keep the reaction poll up here for a little bit. The interesting thing about this Arizona State job that I was talking about uh, with, with uh, James last night. It, it's kind of an amoeba. It can become whatever the head coach wants it to be. It's an open book. It's a blank slate. If you want to come in and be a defensive-centric team like Todd Graham wanted to be, you can come in. He didn't actually end up being successful at all, but you can do that. If you want to bring in an elite offensive system to that, you can. If you want to bring in a high-flying recruiting system to that, you can. This coaching position is very valuable and very enticing because it can become whatever you want it to be. So number five, we have Charlie Strong, the head coach of South Florida. Good option. I think he's going to stay at UCF, though. He's, he's done a good job there. And, uh, you know, we, we've seen him take over uh, after the debacle that was him at Texas. But he's done well for them. He's a good quality guy. I think that Charlie Strong would be a stable option for Arizona State. But at the same time, I don't know how good he would be for that team as a whole. So we'll, I'm a little more wary of Charlie Strong. And number four, we have Terrell Austin, the defensive coordinator for the Detroit Lions. Terrell Austin would be a, an interesting pick. I think, I think he'd be an interesting pick, mostly because if you want him to actually you know, come in, this would be one of his first times as a college head coach, but I think he's going to stay in the NFL. I think that him, for him, a NFL head coaching job is coming up very quickly. The defense has been stable despite the fact that it hasn't exactly been the best defense in the world. He's known as a great leader in the locker room. A, a guy to kind of compare him to would be a Vance Joseph who got picked up by the Denver Broncos as the Miami Dolphins uh, defensive coordinator the year before. Another option that we have is Pep Hamilton, the offensive coordinator for Michigan. This one kind of surprises me, mostly due to the fact that there are people calling for his head at Michigan right now. That offense has not been good. Uh, I think Pep Hamilton's one of the most overrated names in offense. I think he got lucky at Stanford having Andrew Luck. So, oh, excuse me, he's the passing game coordinator for Michigan, which, let, let, you know, I don't think that helps him at all. If he's the passing game coordinator for Michigan, that's only going to hurt him, seeing as the fact that they, <laughs> they've been, you know, LOL, JK, passing coordinator for Michigan, they've been awful. So we'll see what happens with, with Pep Hamilton. I think he's going to end up getting fired. I don't, think an, I don't think a head coaching job for him is anywhere on the horizon. Here's an interesting name, Derek Mason, the head coach for Vanderbilt. I, I actually like this name. I think this could be a really good fit for him. It would give Arizona State a guy who isn't a massive name, but at the same time, you know, 
has a good mind to him, a good defensive mind. He was the Stanford defensive coordinator for a couple of years, 2011 to 2013. He has NFL experience as well. He played in the NFL too. So I, I think this would be a quality, a quality hire, despite what his record is. Sometimes the coach is better than the team. And I think this is an, an instance just like that. If Matt Campbell's getting all this appeal, I think Derek Mason could be a good name to move on. But the number one name that we've actually heard with Arizona State, Kevin Sumlin. Kevin Sumlin would be, in my opinion at least, the perfect fit. I think it would be a perfect fit. Brings an offense over there, brings another big-name head coach to the Pac-12. Whether or not the record has been there in terms of success for Kevin Sumlin is another thing, but I think that Kevin Sumlin would be a great option. Let's move away from Arizona State and into Mississippi State. We have Jeremy Pruitt, the Alabama defensive coordinator. Uh, again, you want to pull... You know, we've seen different coordinators from Alabama go on to do big things. Kirby Smart's one of them. I think that we should have Alabama. I think Jeremy Pruitt would be a good option, but at the same time, I think there are better names out there. Number four, we have Barry Odom, the Missouri head coach. I question this. Uh, you know, Missouri, I wouldn't call a, a high-flying program, but, you know, Drew Locke has done incredible things for them. Andrew Luck's evil twin brother. Not, not crazy about Barry Odom. Let's move away to Bill Clark, though. Bill Clark has risen, taken the UAB uh, Dragons from the depth of nothing. Literally, they, were, they didn't have a football program, and now they have a better record than Florida. They're going to a bowl game this year. Pretty incredible stuff from UAB in a, in a year where no one thought they were going to do anything. I think that this would be a pretty fantastic option for, Bill, uh, for, for Mississippi State. I'm a big fan of this one. I really do believe that we're going to see a pretty uh, – I think Bill Clark would actually be a pretty good name. At number two, we have Neil Brown, the Troy head coach. Pretty, pretty lax option. They did have that big win over LSU. He is getting a lot of appeal as one of the younger up-and-coming coaches in college football right now. At the same time, he is the head coach of Troy. Jumping from Troy to Mississippi State would be a, a, a big jump. I think it'd be a big jump, especially since, you know, Troy's been good 10-3 in 2016, 9-2 this year. But again, a jump from Troy to Mississippi State, eh, a little, little big of a jump for me. And then, I love this hire, Mike Bobo, the head coach for Colorado State, has been a, a revelation for that program, really taking that program from just nothing to a, a decent amount of success the past couple of years. I mean, 7-6, 7-6, 7-5 in that conference, I think that Mike Bobo would be a really good option for them. I'm, I'm, I'm a fan of Mike Bobo. I think that he'd be a really good stable option for Mississippi State. I think the program kind of upgrade is there. You're not going from Troy to Mississippi State. You're going from Colorado State with a decent enough program and jumping to Mississippi State. So I'm, I, think, I think Mike Bobo would be a great hire for the Colorado, or excuse me, for the Mississippi State Bulldogs. 